On episode 46 of Chit Chat, we muster up the strength to talk about gaming fatigue. Getting tired of playing board games is something that happens to many of us, and everyone needs a break from time to time. Of course, that's not going to stop us from talking about them. Welcome back to Chit Chat. This is episode 46, and we are going to be talking about fatigue. Not my own personal fatigue. I do have a cold, but we're going to be talking about gamer fatigue. Uh, and that means slightly different things to different people, but as many games as we play, it is true sometimes we get a little tired of playing games. Sometimes we get a little tired of playing with the people we play games with. None of these people, though. We all love each other. But before we get to any of that, we're going to talk about who won last episode. So, Stephen Clark, you have won Selenia. Just make sure you email us at manvsmeeple at gmail.com. And this week, we're giving away a $50 gift certificate to The Broken Token. Make a comment below, and you're entered to win. Sweet. Fatigue. 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 Should we just act fatigued for the rest? Because I'm there already. I can be well, there. I mean, you kind of hit on the head. It means a lot of different things, and I think this topic is going to go yeah. all over the the place. Yep. So let's talk about just games in general. Like, If anyone is fatigued, it's probably us and other media creators who touch dozens and dozens of new games. You know, everyone Every is month. getting out their tiny violins right now, playing uh, them for us. True, but everyone's in the same situation. You have piles of games at home that you yeah. probably either still have wrapped or have never played. And you're constantly asking yourself, like, how am I going to get through this? Do I even want to play it? Am I buying games just to buy games? So there's a lot of things that tire you as a gamer. Yeah. And we do a lot of different things to kind of push through that. But there's other things that kind of re-energize our love for the hobby. Because I'm so excited when new games come in. And I think we thrive on that, like yeah. touching yeah. new games. And even though we may play a game once or twice, <clears throat> it's that first experience with the game and trying to find those gems in this giant, just you know, huge amount of games that are being released right now. We may find one or two of those a month. And that just kind of re-energizes ourselves and be like, oh, we found this great game. And it pushes you through into the next set of really good games. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Especially when it's like a pleasant surprise. Sometimes mm -hmm. we'll get games we may never have heard of them. We happen to get them to the table. Even if we have a backlog of stuff that we're trying to work on, we might get them to the table. And then we're blown away by a game that we really didn't know much about. That, mm -hmm. that definitely re-energizes me. On the flip side, sometimes we're going to be really anticipating a game that we're like, oh, check that UPS, check, is it coming, is it coming? And then it comes, we've been anticipating it, and then we play it, and we're like, oh, all right, it was okay. Like, it wasn't maybe what we'd expected or hoped it for it to be, so that kind of goes, that piles more of the fatigue on a little bit. Right, I mean, you're, you said it yourself, there's so much you have to dig through to find those gems. And we're in a pretty unique position, I know, where we play a lot of games that maybe we wouldn't choose to play or we wouldn't seek out that games that are sent to us or come to us or games coming to Kickstarter. And while it's rare that we play like a, what I would call like a bad game, most of the games that come to us are pretty good. Yeah. But eventually you reach a point where it's like it needs to be great to stand out and you get kind of tired of just playing games and learning games and even a game that might be great one year, it just that day you're just so just over it that it just doesn't have the same effect it's, on you. It's exhausting, and I gotta say, that's probably why people are, or at least us, why we get so excited to evangelize some of the games. Because we wade through a lot of, and I know you don't want to say it, but there's a lot of crap out there. There really is just mm -hmm. a lot of just noise in the industry. But we find those gems, and then we just want to tell everyone about them. Yeah. Like, like your water gates, you know? Mm -hmm. Those type of games that come along so rarely, when you play them for the first time, you just want to play it dozens of times. And those kind of games just make you want to explore for the next game that could possibly fall in that same pattern. For sure. I mean, I would say if we look at it from not our side of it, yeah. right? I think one of the things that I see the most, in, I, and I was one of the people kind of suffering from that prior to spending more time with you as a group, um, was just the amount of stuff coming out. like. It, for us, for everybody, like, how do I know which game do I even want when there's a thousand games coming out a month anymore? That, to me, is a different type of a fatigue because I don't, you know, do you even, is it, I go for the one that is the hot Kickstarter? Is it the one that I go that gets the most hype? How do you decide where to spend your dollars on this, on this box of fun that you're trying to purchase for yourself or for your gamer group or whatever the case might be? The goal, of course, is to play it more than once. Mm -hmm. um, and I think one of the things that, I mean, I, I got into a really bad habit of just backing a lot of stuff because I know somebody working on the project or, um, you know, it looked cool or I liked the 
day one reward or whatever. Or just that FOMO. That yeah, or, or FOMO. And I think that a lot of people who probably are watching our programs or uh, just gamers in general are finding themselves in that place because it's not slowing down. I, I think we all, we had that bubble conversation yeah. not too long ago and we're like, what, is, is it going to burst? It doesn't really seem like it has yet or it's kind of just still growing. You're waiting. You're like, oh, are we lot. there yet? <laughs> there, there's a lot out there. And I think one thing that just occurred to me as you were saying that is it's the industry part of it, but it's also us as individuals and how much we consume. Mm -hmm. You know, this is our hobby. It's all of your hobbies probably. How much are you into that hobby? If you right. obsess about it day in and day out, it's easier to get fatigued mm -hmm. when you get that deep into something. So one of the things we've talked about in terms of how we sort of combat that and how I'm sure a lot of people do is, I'll play video games. Yeah. You'll play video yep. games, I know. Yep. And you just need to like, you know what? I, I, I've read enough rules. I, I've been at enough tables. I want to be by myself even playing video games and just play something to get away from it. Basically tapping into another hobby, which I mean, not to get too, not, not to <laughs> psychoanalyze it, but you know, to diversify what you're doing helps with the fatigue. You won't get burnout out as much if you kind of bounce around and do a different, a I've, couple different I've things. I've always gone through those cycles where I'll play board games heavy for eight to 10 months and then I need a break. You know, I'll, I'll break yeah, away from it. was severe. You would go boom, like yeah. way in the other well, direction. Definitely before we started uh, MDM, yeah. I, would, I would gravitate, you know, every six months and I would go heavy one way or the other. But now it's more, you know, I find a game a, a video game to latch onto, and I'll do that. Or I'll watch a series on Netflix or, yeah. or whatnot, or a movie, and then I'll just break away. Because when you play games, you have to approach it from a point of fun. If you don't, and it becomes a job, then it, you lose the fun, you lose the enjoyment of the hobby. Right, I think that's a key thing, and I think that's why you see a lot of content creators kind of drop off or maybe kind of step back out of the limelight. I, we've seen this a lot in the past couple sure. of years. And I think it's because when it stops becoming a hobby and starts becoming a job, it is so easy to get burnout doing this. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're lucky in that there's four of us, and we have other people uh, in the community that come in and teach us games and things that we can kind of split that workload. But a one-man show, having to learn mm -hmm. all of these games and play all these games, yeah, I just lot. can't, like, I can't fathom a situation where I can get, like, you couldn't get burned out. Like you were saying, it's nice for us because if I don't want to play a certain game or do a certain video, I don't have to be in it because we kind of split that up. I can just stay at home and play video games that day. <laughs> but when you're producing content all by yourself, or even if you're just a gamer at home who's like running, you know, there's the guy that runs the game group. Yeah, exactly. Trying to keep up with all this content and learn all the games, teach all the games, it's exhausting. Yeah, forget about content creators for a second. Just any gamer who is the person who generally Ooh, nice runs thing. the games, mm -hmm. like if that's where game night is and that's the person... That person's at risk of getting fatigued for sure because you know for a fact that after a few weeks that guy's like, is someone else maybe going to read some rules? <laughs> yeah. You know, that's, that's going to happen for sure. So, you know, sp spread that around. You know, say, hey. Or, or, you know, I have a couple game nights and one of them I used to. I haven't done this recently. I'll send out a couple videos uh, on the game to the people who are coming beforehand and say, okay, just do a tiny little bit of homework skim or scrub or watch it to double speed through this video just so you have a sense so that we're not spending you know some of these games for new players takes you know at least 15 minutes or more potentially to teach a game uh, yeah. a, a big one um, and then it's a, a long night well yeah there are times where like even at just my husband or our friend family game group that we have I'll, I'll just be like Rodney did a video of this <laughs> You guys just watch the video, even if I know the game, because I just don't want, I just I'm, just don't feel like teaching right yeah. now. And I know there's content, so I'll either send it out ahead or I'll even be like, all right, here, watch the phone. I'm going to go, <laughs> I'll go get dinner <laughs> while you guys watch the video. And then we'll set up and play when I get back. Because uh, it's just, it is nice to not have to. I, do you guys find too, especially ga with games, obviously we see similar things across games. But like you've read through so many rule books, you forget which game sometimes, and you're like, oh, oh, or even a game happens. you love and you play all the time, and it's been a while, and you come back to it and you're like, oh wait, how did that work again? Mm -hmm. <laughs> I yeah, find that that's kind of a thing. We've definitely had games where, like when we're doing a lot of videos, we're like, is wait a minute, is this the one where you do this? Is did this yeah. have this mechanic, or was it the other one that had this mechanic? Because sometimes we'll play the games, and then there'll be a few days between then and when we're filming. So, and we've played a lot of games in yeah. between. So it's important to sort of like, 
stay on task, at least for us to do something like that. Well, even my favorite games, like we just went back and replayed all three of the Russian railroads between yeah. my wife and I. And you I play played American? That, yeah, I've played that game dozens of times, but it's been two or three years since I've played it. Probably since BGG three years ago since I played American, which was the last one released. I had to reread the rule book because I had forgotten oh, most for of American, the core mechanics. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I, I forgot how to play. And when you, you know, when you're into so many different games, I find that happening more and more often, even with games that I've played numerous times. When there's so many games that, that share mechanics, just a little different, and you have to remember that it's like, you'll be doing an action, oh, I get three coins for this. Oh no, in this game it's five. Oh, oh yeah. In this game, <laughs> one is worth 10, vic like 10 points, whatever, like, it's just very difficult to keep track of all of that, especially for games that are very similar. Uh, especially games by the same designer. Like, I don't know how many times I've forgotten what it means to take a debt in a Martin Wallens game because they're just always so different. But they're always debts. <laughs> right, there are always debts. The so other thing that I would say, like, just from a fatigue standpoint, if we're looking outside of what we do, right, and what everybody else is, is I find that I've, I've seen some people commenting online when certain games get announced. I won't name any specifically, but, like, theme. Oh, another blank theme game oh. do we really need another blank they're theme just game they're tired of they're like tired of that theme and there's i know there's several out there that we see a lot of games obviously zombies is one we mm -hmm. see a lot of and even to the specifics of like walking dead games anymore but zombie games and cthulhu games you see a lot of those pirate um, games pirate games i mean there's not a genre anymore that you can't say this about Generally. Probably, probably like not. Few. Yeah, but there very are some few. that have been done and done and done, yeah. and, I, and I can see that. And I'll say, "Oh, geez, another zombie game," and then you're like, "Ooh, that looks kind of fun, <laughs> right?" Uh, it, and so you get fatigued, and so you might pass something over at first. Even do you guys ever do that where you're like, "I've just from a from a theme standpoint, I'm like, I've got enough zombie games. Oh, I'm all done the with time. zombies." I mean, we're, all four of us here are swayed by the look of a game. So sure. if we yeah. look at a game and the cover is not, you know, doesn't grab you and the components don't grab you. We're obviously going to look it over, but also there's a variety of games that do have those obscure themes. Uh, Rococo is one of those games that a lot of people have just passed over. It's about dressmaking, but it's a fantastic game mm. if you dig into the actual Absolutely. gameplay itself. Yeah. Good point. This is kind of a hard thing to wrap your head around, but to sort of get away from that cult of the new and the things that fatigue us that we've talked about, like reading new rules and learning new games and all of that. Um, I just just last night uh, went back and pulled Cryptid out to play, which mm -hmm. I hadn't. Pl I probably haven't played Cryptid in at least in six months. Yeah, it's been a while, um, and it just felt. And, and there's not a lot of rules in that to really remember. Right. In fact, when I was opening the box, I was like, "Wait a minute, do I remember how to play this? Are we going to be able to get going?" And it 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 was easy to remember. It felt like a comfortable old blanket mm -hmm. that you just wanted to. It, it was it was nice. I didn't have to think too much, um, and I also remembered how much fun I had playing it. That was in a weird way a nice way to combat the fatigue of at least sort of the cult of the mm -hmm. new aspect. And it's important to keep those type of games on your shelf. Like oh, yeah. with all the new games coming in, it's very easy to get lured into whatever is hot at that given yeah. time. But when you have games like Cryptid or Russian Railroads and a variety of, you know, Twa is one of those games for me, you can always go back to those classics because you know that the content is really good, the gameplay is mm -hmm. really solid. You can use those games as crutches to introduce new players into the hobby where it may be a little bit more difficult because you don't know what the new game is going to hold, even though people may like it, some people m might not, may have mm -hmm. pretty components that could lure people in that the gameplay is not super solid. So, you know, that's one of the suggestions. Keep those old games on your shelf. So yeah, you and variety is the spice of life. Sure. Right. Like I said, last night we played, and we usually play like a big Euro, and it's usually new, so I'm usually teaching it, but last night we played Horrified, which was, it's pretty simple, mm -hmm. oh, straightforward, yeah. also short, yeah. and cryptid. So we got two games in last night, which we don't typically do, and it was like everyone knew what they were doing, and we had fun. We got out of there by 10 o'clock, and it was like, wow, that was actually quite a bit better than spending four hours it's, playing some new game. And we do that all the time. We'll have game days. We just mm -hmm. had one a couple of days ago where we played four games, and you know, three of them were not great. You know, and then we'll come back and we'll visit the older games. We'll have a great game night because we play one or two <coughs> games that we know that yeah. we love. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's funny, too, because I, I took a couple of new games over to my game group the other day. And just to show, it was just one and medium, mm. just so that I could show them to them. And we played just one and they were ready to play. And I'm like, no, no, let's just play medium. And they, they go, we don't play games like you play games. <laughs> oh. And I was like, they wanted to play the well, same Well, they wanted thing. to keep playing just one. And so then when I, I was like, okay, we can come back to it. Let me just show you medium. And then we ended up playing that twice. Because I knew we only had a short amount of time yeah. to play, which is why I took those games. 
and uh, I had a feeling we would play medium a little longer, but it's, I also forget now. I don't, I don't play games like we used to play games where we just sit down and we kind of goof around and take our time. It's like, I'm like, okay, here's the game. All right, next game, because <laughs> yeah. I want to yeah. get through all the new stuff, you know? I want to show, I want to show them these games. I hadn't seen them for a while, but anyway. You know, I'm, I'm actually a little envious of the old days. And when I see people come into like the, our local game that store again? with, <laughs> yeah, well, exactly. I mean, it is a first world problem. People that come in with literally no idea. They're just like, oh, I haven't played a, a new game in three years. What's this one? Let's just take it and learn it and play it. That's and like, cool. there's just like no stress. There's no need to play the next new thing. Like mm -hmm. it's just, I remember playing games as a hobby. And it's I relaxing. Love, now I love that. playing games professionally and I love what we do, but like there's part of me that is like, I just kind of wish I didn't know the next like six months of games, right? Like I want to just walk into a game store casually. Sure. And be surprised by something. There's a joy though when you do know what's coming out. I mean, the there is. It's, it's no, it's, it's a balance it's a for sure. Yeah. It, yeah. To do a little, and just like we said earlier, just be smart about how you <laughs> approach the hobby, yeah. and don't get too obsessed in one direction, and just try to keep things, you know, yeah. balanced. From experience, too, one of the things that you could easily do is just go watch a bunch of videos, like. That initial need. Is this a shameless plug no, for no, our I mean, channel? No, not even us. <laughs> but just go, like, when you want to buy something and you're just lured by that next big game, go watch two or three videos. See if it's for you. And then. Different opinions. And then, yeah, yeah, get different opinions from different people and then make the decision whether or not you want to spend your money uh, to pay for your mortgage or to, to buy board games. <laughs> so. Yeah, that balance you were talking about between being excited about something new and the joy, I think we have one with about the stuff we've been playing, right? Yes. You, oh, you want me to go right into Marvel? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Because if you Absolutely. don't, sure. I think, Speaking I, think of I will. Speaking of obsessive part obsessive of the hobby. Obsessive and yeah. excited. Jeremy will spend the next 45 minutes talking about Marvel. Yeah, I'll talk about... the whole show on Marvel. Uh, we are going to do some <laughs> some pieces of, of Marvel. But anyway, the Marvel the card game came out. Uh, it's Marvel not Champions. out yet. Marvel, right? Champions. Marvel Champions the card game came out. It's not out yet. It comes out in October. They're absolutely fantastic at making LCG products, and it's Marvel. And it is so good. Like each of the heroes are very, very different in the way that they play. Uh, it's just a super fun LCG. I know that it has a weird business model where you have to kind of buy into it uh, to really kind of want to, you know, progress your decks and, and, and build those decks the way that you want them to play. All the villains are very unique in the way that they play as well. And it's a very fun co-op. I've played it solo four or five times now, and then we've played it multiple times. I mean, I've probably played the yeah. game over a dozen times now, and I'm not sick of it even remotely. I yeah, we only a have a small box. amount of the content. Yeah. Well, and the thing too is, to your point about LCGs though, it's, if you're gonna do an LCG, you know what you're getting, you kind of know what you're getting into. I mean, I did Arkham, you've done Lord of the Rings. So LCGs are living card games, if you don't know what that is. And that means that there's new content coming out for them so that you can expand upon it so that you can extend the life of the game that you have. So there's gonna be new scenarios, new things coming out. I've played Arkham for a very long time. We have a lot of fun with that, but I even found myself kind of going like, I get it, I love Arkham, I do, but it's it's a little bit grueling at, at times. It's a hard game, and they all are. And the thing was, is we jumped into Marvel, and it's just as hard. You're getting your butt kicked just as much, but I found that I was, I was it was a little more rewarding to get my butt kicked by something I can connect to because of yeah, my love of yeah, the comics. The and it's nothing against Arkham, it's a great license. It's just a little different because I'm a little more into the comic side of things. So it's fun now to have another LCG to get into. It's a yeah, little cool. less random in the way that mm -hmm. it plays. And then also the aspect of going from that alter ego to hero side. The first couple of times you play it, you think it's a gimmick, but then you realize the importance of oh, managing yeah. that every okay. single game and every round. And then it becomes something much, much different. So I do just want to say it's obvious Jeremy does not have fatigue when it comes to Marvel no. Champions. No. no. That's exactly, so that's a yeah. happy balance one where <laughs> right. we're all kind of like, I'm not, that's not one I think any of us are going to get sick of anytime I'm not soon. sure it's a happy balance. I'm pretty <laughs> sure he's like off sure. the charts Happy excited balance for some it. of us. Right. Yeah. So what else have we been playing? Um, well, we talked about last chit chat we were going to play Flotilla and we did and we've played it twice since yep. then. So Jeremy won both of those games. Yep. So. Um, it's it's such a unique and weird game. It's just like it's very hard to quantify this as like in any kind of review format. It's different. Yeah. It's going to be different for every yeah, player. It it's going to be different in every game because it is so player controlled that your game experience is going to be so vastly different yeah. um, based on who's at the table. It's not going to be a game for everyone, but there are going to be people that sit down and play this game and absolutely love it because it is. We're talking about games that do something new. This game does stuff I've never seen really in a game before, so I'm excited to see it get out there and start to see what people think. I think it's gonna be pretty divisive 
Um, but I think overall, uh, overall, I really enjoy it's it. It's a beautiful game from WizKids, number one. Like, the art's really, yep. really mm -hmm. well done. And then the aspect of the dual cards, being able to play on two different ways, mm -hmm. two different game modes, basically, to play the game. And then all of those cards do different, unique abilities. And it has that Concordia thing, yeah. which everyone mm -hmm. loves, where you play cards. And then and eventually the scoop them. Yeah, that's that's such a satisfying yeah. thing to do in a well, game. Well, and the theme is interesting, and I th they did a good job of incorporating it into the game, I think, where yep. you're, you're seeing what, what you're supposed to be doing, which uh, I know we keep saying the wrong thing, because you're like, that's not what it is. It's not what it is. <laughs> a garbage city? <laughs> garbage city. Floating, a floating <laughs> it does look like a bunch it of does. garbage. It's a bunch, of, it's a bunch <laughs> of ships. It's like Mad Max or Waterworld. Yeah, yeah. You know, no, it's super, scavenged super neat, though. Yeah. It's uh, definitely World. something worth checking out if you're, yeah. uh, if you're interested in it. It's got good art. Yeah. So what have you been playing? Oh, geez. Not really anything. I've been... What? Uh, well, Marvel. <laughs> Marvel, but like at home. So my husband's schedule has been kind of weird lately. So by the time he gets home, he just wants to relax. So we've been... We decided to start watching a couple of shows instead of playing games. And so I, I actually would be talking about TV shows and not games. <laughs> what shows have you been watching? So Carnival Row, we started yeah. that. Any good? Yeah. Really? Oh, yeah. Okay. I like it a lot. Yeah, I want to try it's, it. It's interesting and it, it's, it's very weird and it's definitely dark. So it just... That, just an FYI. And then Dark Crystal, of course. I love Dark Crystal. It's a childhood favorite for me. And to come back and see it being brought back to life, um, they're doing an incredibly good job with it. It's yeah, I wonderful. Yeah, I watched just the first episode, and it's amazing. I mean, there's some cool new effects, mm -hmm. but it looks like it was made just like it was made back then. Yeah, it's all just puppets. better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't, yeah. they didn't really go in a direction you'd think most studios would, it's well, I, which, is nice, which yeah. is nice. The voice actors, are s the, the, of the characters that you find in this prequel uh, that were in, that are in the original, the voice actor match has it's been great. Yeah. really, really good. So yeah, I enjoy it. Well, I, as you know, I've been playing, I played Horrified and Cryptid last night. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll talk a little bit more about Horrified. Um, I just recently played that a couple times last week and then again last night. This may be like, I don't have a lot of co-ops that I love, but this may be quickly becoming my top co-op. Like, mm -hmm. mainly because co-ops for me are a great way to introduce people who don't play a lot of games to a game, plus this license. Everyone knows mm -hmm. these universal monsters. Mm -hmm. Everyone can relate to it. And the absolute coolest thing, bar none for this game, is the unique difference in all of these monsters, the way you have to defeat them. When I taught the game last night, and I was saying, I saved that part for last. I was like, okay, here's what we have to do for uh, the Wolfman. Here's what we do for Jackie. And I could see the people around the table going, oh, that's cool. Like, you have to get through, take this riverboat to the creature's lair before you can defeat the creature. Very, very cool game. Highly recommend it. And it's not too uh, easy if you play no. it with three monsters. You can play it with two monsters. That's relatively easy, I think, for yeah. experienced yeah. gamers. Three Monsters was challenging. We got down to where we were really close to losing. I haven't tried four monsters, but I understand it's that's it's rough. Rough. It's rough. And well, some of the monsters seem a little rougher than others. Mm -hmm. Like the mummy yeah. looks like it's going to take a lot more of investment in, of time yeah. to get through it. Plus, it takes literally just more to damage them. Yeah. Uh, I played Fuji Flush again for the first oh, time yeah. in like years. I mm -hmm. uh, played that back in 2016. Fun little van, uh, hand voiding game. Mm. Uh, taught that over the weekend to a bunch of family. And then also Detective Club, uh, right. which is kind of like Chameleon or The Insider meets Dixit. Mm. Totally smashed up. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it. In fact, that was a big hit at the family game night, too. We played, and it plays up to maybe six or more. So we had a big table of people, oh, cool. so Fuji Flush and Detective Club cool. awesome. were the games. Right on. Yeah, so if you guys are fatigued at all, please let us know in the comments below. And how of you games, guys, not our uh, show. Well, either <laughs> or. <laughs> yeah, let us know how you guys get through gamer fatigue because we would be interested yes. in knowing that as well. And thanks for tuning in to Chit Chat 46, and we will catch you guys next time. Bye-bye. Well, that's another episode of Chit Chat in the Bag. Thanks for watching. If you want to check out another one, there's probably one right over here in the bottom left-hand corner, or probably your right-hand corner. Whatever corner, we have something to click on. So click on one of these things and good things will happen.